have mercy on me how one day can change your life it's like the lottery you know one day you're broke on youtube you know with 35 subscribers and you play the lotto ticket the next day and then suddenly something happens right you're worth a hundred million dollars whatever it is you're not because now the medium the median salary uh i would say middle class probably a million something bucks and now to be considered able to be able to retire you need about five million bucks folks so inflation rises time rises and guess what the states have risen off for sports la lakers make the moves realize lebron james is 35 years old and are saying there is no time but now for us to make the move and the move happened yesterday did a quick video anthony davis joins the squad anthony davis joins the squad so what happens here right quickly to go over the trade and what happened was the talk of the night you can see it um again moves okay what do they lose what do they lose in this transaction the lakers lose let's look at their depth chart instead of looking at the uh the the, the, the kia highlights here okay they lose Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and a fourth round pick. And uh, excuse me, the, the first round, fourth pick in the draft, okay, for this year's draft. Everyone was talking about where they're going to go in the draft. Garland, DeAndre Hunter. I didn't like that play, right? But anyway, I like Garland, so I'm going to keep talking about Garland. But Hunter, Culver, several players they could get. Those three get traded over to the Pelicans for Anthony Davis. And the depth chart is simple. When you look at the team, let's go. In, let's just go ahead and look at the depth chart for the Lakers. I pulled this up. 10 points a game, gone. 18 points a game, gone. That's 28 points, right? Then you lose Josh Hart. Where's Josh Hart out on this roster? Josh Hart is 8 points. What's funny to me, guys. Josh Hart with the number of minutes he gets. Look at Lonzo and Josh Hart's number. Even though Lonzo affects the game in different ways, remember, he's probably getting half the minutes Lonzo's getting, but look what he's producing. So Josh Hart is a steal, a six-man-of-the-year candidate in the future, definitely, for the New Orleans Pelicans. They also get Brandon Ingram, a short fire shooting guard who's going to pay dividends. I call him Kevin Durant Lights. Doesn't have the fluidity of Kevin Durant, but is as long as him and can score like him. Lonzo Ball, he comes to me as the Jason Kidd with more defense and no shot. Jason Kidd had no shot either coming over without and also without the speed. If he had the speed, it would be a different ball game um, for the Pelicans. And the Pelicans, you look at their depth chart and you say, what the hell did the New Orleans Pelicans need? And obviously, with Anthony Davis being gone, look at that point guard depth. Okay? David Griffin has just been signed to the Pelicans, and he's making smart moves. Look at their depth at point guard. Okay? I'm also going to tell you something else. So you lose, what, 18, uh, 10, and 8. All right? So that's approximately, okay, so 10, 18, 8, 26 points. You're losing 26 points a game from the Lakers' perspective. What do you gain back? <laughs> 26 points per game and 12 rebounds from Anthony Davis. Let me run that back for you. 10 points, 18, I'm sorry, 28. I'm sorry, I can't count. He averaged 18. So 10 points, 28, 36 points, okay, per game. Anthony Davis brings you back 26 points per game. One guy, okay, if you want to look at it like that, that's the way it is. Upgrade, guys. That's an upgrade, okay? First thing first, when you bring over that 20, so there's 10-point advantage, then you trade over a draft pick, right? The draft pick may give you 10 or 12. So from a numbers perspective, in my mind, in my mind, I would say it looks like the Pelicans have got the advantage slightly by gaining in uh the three players that i just mentioned and ball ingram and hart okay boom but but gotta remember does this open up points for this man or does it open up points for this man right 
who steps up. They have a strong depth chart, right? Reggie Bullock, people forget he was just brought over in Contavious Caldwell Pope. Both former Piston players, I think Pope is underperforming by a landslide. If he gets the minutes this summer, if they resign him, will he be able to step up? Do they re-sign Lance will make him dance? Does he step up and take this place? There are players on here just looking at it from the outside in that can contribute and immediately step in to make up the 10-point disadvantage they lost by losing Ball, Ingram, and Caldwell Pope. I know you're going to say you didn't talk about rebounds or assists. Assist wise, no offense. Ray John Rondo can step right in and control the general. That's a first sign for the Lakers. This is a no brainer. You can get him cheap. Re sign Rondo ASAP. Done. Sign that and get that done. Cheap. Sign him. Okay. That's floor generalship. Full time on the floor. He can do wonders. All right. Now, the problem is obviously the depth chart. What is it going to be? I think you keep LeBron at the small four. I think you keep Kuzma at the power four. Maybe you rotate in a center of uh, um, Davis. Depends how you play it. Or you go big ball. You move LeBron James down, even though he's older. May not have the pace to keep up with the point the shooting guards of the league. However, it is what it is. You move LeBron James down. Move Kuzma to the three, even though he's more of a power forward. Move Davis to the four and move McGee. Again, I mentioned the players they need to resign. They need to resign one of these big guys. And I think they can keep Tyson Chandler on the real, real cheap. Okay? So you re-sign Javal McGee. Had a great year last year, in my opinion. You re-sign Tyson Chandler. And then you have to make a decision point on Mike Muscala or Mo Wagner. And, and Mike is your stretch. Mo Wagner is your rookie who's coming along. Let's see what he can do. LA is looking pretty good. Now, who? Now hey, let's jump over. This is a deep dive analysis. It's not just this talk from the heart trying to make 30 videos, all right? Who is available from a free agent perspective that these guys can go and get to fill out their debt charts? Number one on my mind, Carmelo Anthony, welcome back to the NBA. You heard it here first. Carmelo Anthony, welcome back to the NBA. Lakers, no doubt in my mind, this is a perfect come up for Carmelo Anthony. Bring him on. He comes in perfectly. They need a scoring punch. They're missing 10 points. Carmelo fits perfectly. I think he will have no problems coming off of the bench with a squad that they can put out there. Or maybe Kuzma comes off the bench. I don't think Kuzma will mind that either. He'll have the green light, and it'll be his best advantage from a contract perspective to come off the bench too because he'll have the green light and may be able to put up more points than 19, okay, or have better efficiency. We jump back to the free agent sector. Who else can these guys get? It's a slew. Is Kemba Walker available, all right? Is Kemba Walker truly available? Is DeMarcus Cousins somebody you want to bring in at center uh, to add on to help with McGee? Okay, you got to keep McGee. He's your rim protection. You got to keep Tyson Chandler. He's your muscle. Keep those two towers, but add in a scoring center. I wouldn't mind that. Remember, win now. I know Mo Wagner is a, in a great talent. He is. But you got to win now. And there's no time. Okay? There's no time. There's other forwards out there, retirees, that could possibly help out. Derrick Rose may be too expensive. Okay? I mentioned that last night. He may be too expensive. Right, Isaiah Thomas, I don't think they get along, right? Keep going down. Dwight Howard's there. Don't know if he's signed. I think he still thinks he's great enough to get a good salary. Brooke Lopez is available. But hey, what will he command? Vince Carter's available. Okay, Jimmy Butler, I think he re-signed. Zach Randolph is available, folks. He didn't retire yet. How about Zach Randolph to fill in the bench? Do you see where this goes now? Do you see why, no offense, everyone's talking about LeBron James, but he's genius? You also got Alice Caruso. So let's go down. Point guard, Rondo Caruso. Fine. Three, you need another third, right? And you need a short shot third, right, to fill that in. You have to decide whether you're going to spend the big bucks and, and go out for Kemba Walker, okay? Or you look down the depth charts at the point guard position. Okay, let's, let me just switch over by, to point guard. Let's go there. Boom. Guard, boom. It should be, it should be quite simple. 
who's available here, uh, many, uh, points per game. D'Angelo Russell will be too expensive. Does Jamal Crawford, somebody like that, come in and help out, right? Air Butso, um, Inks and Stenson, so forget about that. Does Jeff Teague open the eyes up? Huh? Does Jeff Teague open the eyes up, okay? I don't think the Knicks will let go. Mood Day is a great defensive guard. Um, Alfred Payton, another strong defensive guard. Huh? Jeremy Lin. They are filling spots here. I like Lin because he can spot up and shoot the three. Okay. Um, there are, oh, Trey Burke is there. Unrestricted. Options, folks. Options. Okay. Terrence Ross at your two guard position. Gerald Green. Folks, they can fill up Ingram stat line in a heartbeat. I can do it. Look at this. Ross, Green. Look at, tell me Green can't score like Ingram. Okay, tell me. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, tell me a 28-year-old Terrence Ross who the Orlando Magic better resign cannot fill up the bucket sheet. Tell me Jeremy Lamb can't fill up the bucket sheet. Must I go on? Must I go on? Austin Rivers is available. Pat Bev is available. Okay, Ben McLemore is available. Kent Bazemore, right? If, they, if they're going to match him, right? I can go on and on. Marshawn Brooks, huh? What do you bought about that? Ish Smith, the quick guard. Quinn Cook, Terry Rosier. He's restricted. He'll resign, right? He'll resign. Again, there are players out here by the boatload. When you really look at it, you say, "Oh, you know what? <laughs> you know what? That wasn't that wasn't such a bad move." Student guard, loaded, okay? They can fill in this chart. Terrence Ross, Gerald Green, those guys can fill up and help out Caldwell Pope if you decide not to re-sign him. You got several point guards available from a free agent perspective. That can, I like Jeff Teague, no offense. I think Jeff Teague, Jeff Teague is a match made in heaven. If they wanna go a little bit cheaper, if he's willing to sign, he can shoot the three ball, he can drive. He has good uh, floor generalship. I'm being honest. I'm not speaking from the heart. Derrick Rose will be too expensive. He had a good year. But Jeff Teague makes a lot of sense. I think I think Rose re-signs with Minnesota. But Jeff Teague to this team would be very nice. Rondo, Teague, Caruso. Nice lineup. You got your assist guy. You got your hustle man. And then you got your Teague will be your main point guard. He won't need to have the ball in his hands to shoot and score the three ball. You add on to the shooting guard position. You move Bullock up. You move Caldwell Pope up. I'm scared about that role. Terrence Ross, right? Terrence Ross or Gerald Green, or maybe move Caldwell Pope and add both of those guys. That looks good to me. The only problem you'll have is defensively, there'll be a gap. Where do you go from a small forward position to back up James or Kuzma, right? That's another position that they'll need help with. Again, in depth. I don't want to get you the the bull crap hey speaking with my emotions what did we do i said again carmelo anthony is the signage here quickly sign carmelo okay who else can they get in free agency old man uh, lua dang is 34 i want some young legs in this position okay by age some young legs um i'm gonna continue to go down nikolai miratek he is an unrestricted free agent he wasn't utilized by Milwaukee totally. I think he's great. What about a Kenneth Fareed for the backup power forward position? Again, the, the Houston Rockets are talking about training their whole team. I think they're stupid. They need minor adjustments and bring them back. They'll be in contention again. Um, young players, Bobby Portis is there at 24 years old. Why not bring him in, uh, even though he's really a power forward, okay? I mentioned the guard, C.J. Miles, unrestricted, 32 years old. How about that? Kelly Oubre, uh, they'll re-sign him, right? Danny Green's unrestricted. Does he leave, right? Um, Kid Gilchrist, he'll be too expensive, I think. Uh, let's see who else. Wayne Selden's restricted. Whew. Stanley Johnson, let's see what they do there. If they let him go, because they believe they have Ingram, they have uh, Williamson coming in. Again, Mario Hazonia. Boy, the Knicks need to restart him ASAP with their situation. Hopefully, he's not let go, but he's there. Mike Scott, he's there unrestricted. 
Again, there's options here to fill in the blanks by the boatload. Only off work sports will get into this detail real time. Look at this, 32-year-old Dante Cunningham. A lot of blue glides. Troy Williams is okay. I don't, don't want to mention him. I'm trying to see who could really go. Um, uh, no, I don't like Jonathan Williams is already there. Uh, I, I think they're pretty much set. Again, most of their guys are free agents, but they can add on. I think they're re-signing a lot of these guys and move forward. Power forward position, there's a boatload. We just went through that. There's a several back backups. Um, I do like Bobby Portis as their main target. They need that that alpha male dog, that Draymond. And that's what Mr. Bobby Portis can bring to the table. And maybe you sign Zach Randolph at a 38-year-old age, but he can still score as your third power forward to back up the range. Okay, This is a great team. Rudy Gay is also available. Hello, how are you? Do you sign two old dogs? Right to put in the background, but you already got Carmelo. That's a definite. Um, I think you add on Green, you add on Ross, you know, you add on a Bobby Portis, right? You add on those guys, you got something special. Look at Thaddeus Young, unrestricted free agent. He's been a great glue guy. Do you bring in Jeff Green? Bring him back to the table. You don't need much. Jeff Green can shoot it. He was borderline LeBron James in, in a few moments. In his time with Cleveland, do you bring him back in and join him in? Nikolai, Jeff Green, Thaddeus Young should be your target. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to afford Bojan Bogdanovic uh, out of Indiana, even though he's another great stretch four that I think that would be paid benefits. You, you add two of these guys, there goes your shooting. You're pretty much set to go for the NBA championship run. LA Lakers, again, it looks bad on paper. But then when you get to the depth charts and you take your heart out of it because you're looking at the players that you love so much, there are so many options for these guys. It is almost a landslide for them to be contenders for the NBA playoffs, barring no injury. Here I got low, barring no injury. We learned how that could happen. Now, New Orleans Pelicans jump back in, right? What do they need? They got they got a lot of rotational needs. Alfred Payton is there, but they need a point guard. They add on onto the ball. Shooting guard, they, add, they solidify that position. They bring in Brandon Ingram. Then they have the fourth pick. And the fourth pick in the draft uh, brings a lot of, lot of uh, talking points. For first and fourth pick, who, you got to think how great that is for the Pelicans. The first and fourth pick in the draft. How can they get R.J. Barrett is my question. Or do you load down? Do you load down? And, and Zion Williams is a four. Don't put him at power four. So how do you load down, right? Where do you go? Cam Reddish? Do you add on Cam Reddish there to, to join Brandon Ingram? Another three-point shooting small forward or guard? Rejoin those two? Uh, interesting play. Darius Garland's a point guard that can shoot. He's like a guard. That's why I say he's there. But they kind of got a guard already. People forget about Frank Jackson. Frank Jackson's going to have a breakout season. He could be a sixth man of the year for the team. Exciting score. He's out of Duke as well. All Duke team. You know, how do you play this? I mean, how scary do you want to get? Could you could you finagle a Drew Holiday and a... Uh, mm, who else could they trade? I was thinking, how could they go all Duke and, and bring in um, Reddish and uh, R.J. Barrett? It's just not possible. But, you know, if you really wanted, you know, could you, could you do, could you keep the fourth pick, trade Brandon Ingram, and there's not enough there. I'm trying to figure out, could they get an 8th or 10th pick and bring an all-Duke team to this? I mean, that would be exciting because Okafor is also a Dukey. Okafor, so let me get let me get down to business instead of imagining things that probably won't happen. So you add in Ingram. Maybe you add on Reddish here, right? I like Stanley Johnson. I hope they re-sign him. I hope he gets a chance. Stanley Johnson, to me, is a step above Cam Reddish at this time. Neg me if you want. He just hasn't had the opportunity to, to let loose. But Stan Johnson is an exciting player. Uh, but do you add in Cam Reddish here, right? Where does Drew Holiday go? I think he goes to his true role, which is a which is a guard position. He's been an undersized small forward for a while. He's done it well. 
but I think you move him over to the two guard, you know, and 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 again maybe move him over to the point guard, his natural position, uh, as you bring in Lonzo Ball. There's a little bit of a little bit of a, a too many, too much talent here or there because Drew Holiday can play multiple roles, but a lot of talent is just not a, a stopping point because as you can see, what happened to the Warriors. So Stanley Johnson, maybe a Cam Reddish here. And in my opinion, the best move for the Pelicans would be to trade down. Okay. It's very easy for me to say this. Just trade down. Um, Garland, you already got Holiday there. You need three-point shooting. You know, I think it's either Reddish or uh, trade down, get Reddish maybe at the, the eighth or tenth slot. And where I'm going to here is how badly do um, the, the Atlanta Hawks want to move up and who do they want to get? I have no clue. I mapped their schedule out, and I already said that they should keep their 8 and 10 slot. But, hey, teams make moves the way they want to make moves. They got their playing chess, and I'm kind of playing checkers in some ways. I'm just looking at the next move. So, you know, if they want to trade down, trade down. Take the 8, 10, maybe get a 17 as well. And then you add on a couple of players there, right? Cam Reddish will be available there. Maybe a Bo Bo take a risk there. I mean, there's several players you can take a risk with at that opportunity. Cam Johnson's another stretch. Uh, what I see here they need is obviously shooting. There's nothing there. Uh, you got to re-sign Julius Randle, in my opinion. Um, now he's going to have the the, glades, the floodgates uh, opened up. And you got to remember at center position, look at the point percentage. Christian Wood had a great, great season last year. You re-sign him. He's a great center. You re-sign Okafor. They will make up the points of Anthony Davis, okay? Name me if you want, but Christian Wood and Jaleel Okafor had tremendous years last year. Okafor had a breakout season. That's why this trade was easier for David Griffin. Check the owl is going to be your glue guy. I really like this team. A lot of options. I hope they trade down the pick and get more assets and then move on from there. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Again, Julius Randle and, and uh, Zion, I think, will be able to play together. You'll have a little bit of a... Of, of a uh, you know, a tight uh, between a rock and a hard place with all the depth that you have. Uh, bringing in, you know, a Cam Reddish, somebody to this position, along with a Zion Williamson here. But it is what it is. Let the cards fall where they may. Stan Johnson, these guys may have to be the second, second, uh, second row of players that come into the game and make things happen. I like this team. Um, Alfred is a free agent. Do you re sign him? I say it's a why not if you just have Lonzo Ball and Drew Holiday can come in as your first guard. Now, the problem is you're, you're going to be missing out on scoring at the point guard position, but maybe you can make it up here by drafting a cam. You got Frank who's going to be able to shoot. You know, you got two scores, and maybe Stanley Johnson can improve upon that, and then you'll have, you got your three, three, three point shooters there. You let the rest of these guys go. Get exciting time, depth chart wise. I think it's very easy for me to see the Lakers have about, you know, 30 million left over, 32 million. So Los Angeles can play and get a big guy where they can fill out their rotation. Right underneath them is the Pelicans, who I think save money, trade all the big money guys, and start the rebuild. Exciting night last night. Big trade. I gave you the full depth analysis on what I think should happen. All four sports a little long, but worth it. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>